for more on the impact of the Fed's decision, we welcome Joe Menorick, Senior Vice President and Research Director at the Committee for Economic Development. Uh, welcome back to the show. Um, Daniel brings up a, a couple good points, but one of them I want to focus on is the, is the not necessarily when in your case, but how. In other words, what data points are they looking at? Because right now we're getting mixed economic signals. Oh, yeah. Um, we're in uncharted waters. Uh, the one thing that the Fed does repeat is that the labor market is weaker than they would like to see it, and inflation is actually below their target range. So they are going to be looking for something that is pretty different, pretty significantly better, stronger in the economy before they even begin to try to act. Then how are they going to do it? This is going to be a really interesting tap dance. I'm going to give you a real simple question. So what? Why can't they keep printing money? Why, why can't they do the bond buying and do what they're doing? What's the danger in the low rates? I mean, people seem to like it. Well, the rates won't stay low once the economy recovers. You begin to see some demand. Sellers begin to have some pricing power. And that includes sellers of labor. You know, labor cost is two-thirds, 70 percent of the cost of doing business in the United States. Uh, wages start to go up. Prices start to go up. So it's inflation. Uh, it's inflation, uh, and uh, we're really in a, a, a zone we've never been in before. Are, are we in kind of no man's land? I mean, on one hand, the housing market's better, but on the other hand, the, the job market, while it is better, it's not great necessarily, and we're getting mixed reports in terms of the export figures and economic figures in the United States. On one hand, you, retail sales seems to be fine, but then consumer confidence seems to be dying down. These are all conflicts. Does that mean that the Fed basically stays pat until there's a stronger signal? They are looking for a stronger signal. I don't think there's any doubt about it. They need to have something that tells them that economic growth is going to proceed even as they begin to withdraw that stimulus from the economy. Is the economy growing? The economy is growing. It's not growing very much. Uh, the rate of economic growth is not enough to make any significant dent in our employment problem, and that's that's really the, where the rubber meets the road on this. When, um, when we first started this QE, I was actually in Asia at the time, and there was a lot of criticism. The issue was low rates, quantitative easing, and the impact that it had on the global community, if you will, how it affected inflation, for example, in parts of the world, how it affected commodity prices in places like Australia. What is the real impact? Well, the, the world is a big and diverse place and it really depends where you are. But if you look across the world, we've got a lot of weakness in the major economies, to be sure. Some of the developing economies doing a little bit better, but there is enough weakness that the Federal Reserve believes that it can make a credible case that they are trying to get the U.S. economy growing. The U.S. economy buys the rest of the world's exports. They should be happy that they're going to get some demand out of the U.S. consumer. Quickly, the Federal Reserve has said time and time again, rates low, extended period of time. They've even projected out a couple years. So there's really not a big risk of rates moving higher, at least in the near and medium term. Is that, is that the way we look at this? Uh, of course, they have not enunciated a particular date. So if you take a poll, uh, our organization took a poll of our business trustees for, uh, for that purpose, uh, people are talking about central tendency 2015 before we see rates beginning to rise. But depends on the labor market. There are a lot of Americans who have left uh, the labor market. And uh, so we don't know how much of a reserve there is out there of people to join the labor market, compete for jobs, hold wages low. A whole other conversation we could have on that. Joe Minerick, thank you, you very much. Again, uh, at the Committee of Economic Development.